Hello everybody, welcome. This is Casey Pfeiffer from 7th Generation Design here with Wes Cook on the camera. Um, we are here on site at a family ranch, multi-generational family ranch, where they are looking to put in a spring water collection system and we're helping out with that. Um, so we're just going to walk you through the work area. Right now the seep has been artificially divided into two flows because an excavator was brought in through this portion and a bunch of material was taken out. The seep is running from way up here above the camera and then we just stuck a bottle in here and measured our flow rate, took the average of four different tests. We dug out a few different spots throughout and there's some active seep points, but really the predominant feature of this spring is that it's coming through as it almost eats me alive. <laughs> it's coming through um, basically a solid, really um, compacted sand layer that's either sandstone or just soft enough to actually be dug with a shovel. So all the way up into here, running down all along this hydrated edge is this really tightly bound layer of sand. Pass me the camera. So for this one right here, we actually dug into that stone layer. This is the water bearing layer and you can see that it's just crystal clear water coming right out of the rock, um, which is really, it's very soft sandstone that you can actually dig with a shovel. Um, and this layer extends all the way up the catchment, all the way over there and all the way over here to the other side. What we're seeing here, because of all the excavation that was done in this area, this really fine white sand, it's just super fine material. And so this is actually the water bearing layer, which is a bummer. We don't want that to wash out, but because so much digging has been done, that material is actively being drawn out and that can lead to potential issues with the spring. This spring has apparently already had a major decrease in flow because a road was put in just behind us here that essentially cut the seep in half, we think, based on the vegetation pattern. So we're gonna do our best to restore that, um, respect the whole shape of the landform and then keep this really fine material where it is so that it doesn't either clog our collection or um, ruin the seep. So the question is, how do we get water from a very diffuse source collected into one point for use? And that's going to be the challenge of putting in the spring collection system. So we'll head up here to where we're actually going to be putting in the wall. So right about where I'm standing, we're going to be using a long section of bamboo rhizome barrier, 36 inches tall. It's just HDPE, um, very flexible, rust, rust proof obviously since it's a plastic. We're using two layers, we're going to bond those together and basically run it right up to this little vertical section here where the excavator stopped digging. Down here have a little bit of a bow and then in that bow, that little dish, is where we're going to put our collection piping. We'll put our filter package and then collect as much as we can what's coming down. The reason we're siting the collection package here is because we're still getting active seepage all along this entire edge of the spring. You can see little spots where we've dug out and uh, just, to, just to mark where the seepage is happening. So right here is where we're gonna be picking up the water and then we'll be putting in a uh, collection package of a bunch of different types of washed stone of varying sizes as we move out from the pipes on out to concrete sand and then ultimately that's what's going to be used to hold the really fine water bearing medium in place. That's the plan right now. Uh, things will of course change as we go. If you want to come up a little bit further you can kind of see the challenge here. Footing is a little bit better than last time. Not quite as many dangers of sinking in but this is all weeping water. All this edge all the way up into this crevice right here. So there's no single point source that we can actually put a collection wall right next to and just get all the water. Our challenge is to work on a way to pick it up without exposing that sand and basically having the water bearing medium collapse. So that's why we're putting in this carefully constructed collection package a little bit further down. Um, it won't be as ideal because the water again is daylighting up here. So it means it is exposed to the elements. And because this medium, I think during the warmer months, it gets really squishy to a point where I could just sink in all the way up to my mid thigh. Like if I step right here, it might get a little bit more dangerous like in and around here. So 
we can't just pile rock on top of it because that's just going to sink in. So we'll probably be working with some secondary filtration of the water downstream once we get it into the pipe. But right down there is going to be our main pickup point, And then we're going to ensure that we're not encouraging any further erosion of the water bearing seam up here. So that's the plan. We'll check in once we get going. Okay, we're back. End of day one. This is the washing station we set up at the bottom. So we've now washed all of our filter package material and staged it up at the top where we're going to be putting in the collection wall and the filter package. You can see now that the water's settled, we got nice clear water coming out. Um, beautiful, cold, clean water. Um, we'll cruise up here to the top and take a look at all of the different stage materials. So this is our two to six inch cobble right here. Then we've got one and a half inch float rock. And then we've got some three eighths pea gravel. And they're gonna go into our filter package down here in the kind of lower zone. Once we install the collection wall in that order. So we'll have the large cobble, then moving outward, we'll have the float rock and then we'll have the pea gravel. We'll have a layer of shade cloth and then we'll have sharp concrete sand as our final barrier to keep all this really fine sediment in place. Um, and we've got our little, I just sank in the mud. I'm not gonna get out of here. Um, so we put in our little little barrage wall and then just dropped the two inch pipe in so we could set all that up. And that's been doing great. Allowed us to wash all the materials. And so we'll get out here tomorrow and right in here, we're gonna key in. This is where the collection wall is gonna key into the slope. We'll get the bamboo rhizome, two layers of that. Um, bonded to each other and then put some fins on it, sinking in here, pack a bunch of material around it. Collection pa package and collection piping will be right here, running down the same course as the existing pipe. And then the wall is going to curve back up and head straight in this way, all the way over to where the buckets are on the other side. And we're going to anchor it in on that side and then backfill it with all this loose material once we get the excavator in, in two days time. Okay guys, here we are, day two. We've had some initial digging at the uh, actual collection point. So we're at about as low as we're gonna go, right around here. This material gets super soft in this zone, so we're not gonna go a whole lot deeper. But we have dug through the spoil wall that was put in place by the excavator, and we found the native sand seam, which we thought we might. Um, so that's good. So we're not gonna be able to go too much deeper by hand. Um, this is one of those days where we wish we had the excavator today instead of tomorrow, but do the best we can with it. So we're gonna, at this depth, basically get it level all the way across to here, and then we're gonna be putting together our um, rhizome barrier HDPE wall. We're gonna get that bonded, and then get that set in place here, and then we'll be ready to install our collection piping. So here we are, start of day three. This is a review of what we did on day two. Um, since we did the last video update, we've got the collection wall in and the basic filter package in place. Um, weren't able to film during that because it was an all hands on deck process that was something of a greased slide. So once we started it, we couldn't stop until we were done. Um, but we finished the trench, dropped in our two pieces of 36 inch tall bamboo rhizome barrier. Once that was in place and the water started coming up, uh, we made sure we puddled in the clay. Then we started putting in our filter package. Um, we'll have some photos that we can drop in of that process as it went. What you're seeing right here for the filter package, there's a layer of sharp concrete sand around the outside. Inside that is 3 8 inch pea gravel. Inside that further that you can't see that's buried is uh, one and a half inch float rock. And then closest to the actual collection piping that's picking up this water is two to six inch cobble. So there's basically progressively more space as the water nears the pipes.
And then coming out the other side, the top pipe is the overflow pipe. So that's if this thing started to get saturated or there was a plug, um, it wouldn't just fill up and overflow the whole thing. It ideally would just exit that pipe. The lower pipe is the actual collection pipe that you can see down towards the bottom is actually running clear water right now. And as of yesterday evening, it was flowing at about 1.6 gallons per minute, roughly 2,200 gallons per day. And uh, today, next step is we're gonna be continuing this wall just a little bit further. We're gonna cut one additional piece of the rhizome barrier, bring up the mini excavator into this zone, cut a little bit further back into this. And we have this nice active seep down here where it's actually moving a good amount of water from our prior measurements. So we'll just try and shunt that extra bit of water over here towards the collection package. Um, we'll lay that in and then the excavator is gonna come and repair all of this. So we're gonna take a lot of the extra material that was spoiled here, fill in the, uh, the big seam right here and just kind of restore the land to its original form uh, before the machine was brought in a year ago and uh, make it nice and clean, get some better access. That along with adding a little bit of additional filter package is the main goal for today. And then we'll be putting in the spring box and the rest of the piping. Got the crew ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> So process update here, the excavator's been taking the kind of rut that was cut by the prior excavator and just smoothing that out, pulling the material that was pushed into the existing drainage back up here to try and restore the original uh, landform. And uh, it's getting really soupy because we're working on top of a, a very hydrated seep, so we almost just got it stuck. So we're trying to pull some of that material out and just kind of mound up here. We'll scrape a little bit from the top of the hill see if we can perch the excavator right about here and then we're going to grab the rest of this material pull it that way and then we'll drop in our final little collection wall wing um, everything else is pretty much complete check in at the top so here's the spring it's not technically a spring head again we're doing more of a seep collection here because we have such a diffuse a large area that's emitting water um, but we've got the collection wall in we cut out um, a good chunk of it right here to bring it down to just above the emergency overflow, um, the shock port rather, um, the shock port coming up over the wall. And then uh, we laid two layers of this queen over the top and packed them with gravel, folded them in on each other. So we have a bit of a cap on top of the filter package in case an animal steps on or something like that and it just won't puncture things or get too crazy. Um, and then soon we'll have a, a fence around this area just to keep out the cows that are known to wander through here. Um, we're gonna be pulling all the plywood out and all the old piping and basically trying to tread as little as possible up in this zone here where it can get really soupy really quick, but this is all that sand seam that's all just oozing water. So the less we touch it, the better. And then we'll bring in the excavator here. He's gonna grab these chunks and then take maybe two feet of this material out and we'll drop in another 11 foot section of the rhizome barrier to here. That's gonna push any additional water that's seeping out of this cut this way towards our pickup point and the filter package. And you can just see down there where it's coming out of the collection pipe. So here we are at the end of day three. We're gonna do a quick little walkthrough of the work that was done today. You can see behind me that the excavators come in and moved a lot of this material back up. It got really boggy up in there. We almost lost the machine and Wes, but we managed to get it out. Um, and then we just got the spring box installed and the tank pad graded down below. So let's come check out the spring box. So up here we've got our main inlet valve for the spring box. There's a union here in case all this piping needs to be disconnected. And then up at the top again, where it comes out of the collection wall, there's also another union. So this entire section can come out should they need to work on it, maintain it, make any changes. Um, so with this valve open, the spring box itself is filling. Right now it's at its equilibrium point. But if they wanted to get in here and work on this, or again, change some fittings here, they can turn this valve, close this one off, and then this one will divert the flow that way they can do what they need to do here and then turn the flow back into the spring box. 
So there's two pipes inside. This is the collection pipe for the actual supply. It's drilled with a bunch of, I think, uh, seven thirty seconds holes up and down the side. And then this is the overflow. So should anything happen where these get clogged for some crazy reason, or this gets ripped off and sedimented in, um, this will help to take care of the overflow of the inbound water if this pipe was totally non-functional. And that's the big win on the day. Cold, clear, clean water flowing out the other end. This is day four, final wrap up of the spring collection installation video. If we cruise up here, towards the spring box. Got some company in the trees. So we reviewed the spring box yesterday. Um, we did a final flow test now that we put in the extra little wing on the collection wall, which you should be able to see from there. We won't get any closer because of the molten mud, um, but that probably is gonna be boosting the flow just a little bit. The most recent flow test we did was about 2,300 gallons per day coming out of the pipe down here, cold and clear which is awesome. We also cut with the mini excavator up above this section, a curtain drain, starting from the high point right up here and then arching out to both sides so that if there is any sheet flow in a future heavy rain event, we're gonna deflect as much of that as possible around this place so that we don't get a lot of mud flow because obviously we've got a, a pretty fragile installation here given what it's sitting on. So that'll help in the event of inclement weather to stabilize this whole section and we're hoping over the coming days and weeks that the flow on here will stabilize and potentially increase a little bit and then they're going to continue laying pipe down here around the corner down to a tank pad that was also installed about 200 feet down slope from here so that's the project went all in all pretty well and we'll keep eyes on it and hopefully come back with a future update not too long <music>